And he wanted us to be free because he wanted our love. And love only comes with freedom. So, rosary was for me my <coughs> device, communication device with God. We all have communication devices with God, like cell phones. I mean, we can pick the cell phone we want. It could be an iPhone or a Blackberry or a Samsung. And religions are those cell phones. You pick the one you want. I mean, you know, the one you feel comfortable with, the one that speaks to you because you know how to use it. Okay? Uh, but you also cannot use it, any cell phone. You can just communicate with the guy in the room, right? And so you can do it in a very direct way. But you also can decide there's nobody in the room. So you talk to yourself. But anyway, God's there. Is and you had, you had all these men around with machine guns and one who took your radios away, and we'll get to some other things in a moment. Are you sure God is a he? A man? A man? I don't have problems with that. I don't, I don't think he's, I mean, I don't think that's a problem for him either. He can be whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go to another entity. What's an anaconda look like? <laughs> that's for you, Greens. Look, the anaconda is not. I'm going to just do it because, you, you, because I did it, actually. It was a monster they had taken out of, of the river. And I was looking at that monster and I said, I have to count because nobody's going to believe this. So I did this one, two. It was bigger because I didn't have high heels. <laughs> so, <laughs> so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was how big it was. And then, it was so big, I mean, the, the, the round thing was so big that I did this. And I said, he could have eaten me. Uh -huh. Easily. It was a monster. And you know, I thought that those things didn't exist. That how, it was how did they get it out of the river? Was it dead or alive? Was it dead or had it been killed? Okay. What happened that day was that uh, there was this girl uh, bathing in the river. And she was alone because normally they all bathe together at the same time, the gorillas. And we prisoners would bathe at another time. But these guys would always do that in group. But this girl, for whatever reason it was, was alone in the river. And she saw the head of the snake um, floating on the... Because it's, it's a river animal. They, they swim. But here, she was looking at her. The, what, what they would say, and I don't know if this is true, but they would say that those animals had have like a, they would call it a bow. The bow thing is that the <coughs> snake opens the mouth and throws like a, like a, a breath. And that breath makes people dizzy. Mogli of the jungle, remember? Yes. <laughs> okay, that kind of thing. So when she saw the animal, of course she panicked. And she called her guerrilla companions, and they shot the animal. They, they killed it. To bring the animal out of the water, they had to be eight guys with an iron chain to pull it out I mean, it was so big and so heavy. The size of the head of the snake, I mean, just imagine a snake. Snakes have small heads and big, right? Well, the, the head of the snake was twice my head. It was a huge, I mean, really huge, and, and very beautiful, by the way. I remember thinking, stupid things. In those moments you really think stupid things. I thought, how many handbags? <laughs> 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 
That's contemporary speaking. <laughs> Very horrible for to, to confess. <laughs> well, let me just read from your own book. A little place here, you say, on the nights of a new moon, a spell was cast on the forest. In the total darkness of its privation, the ground would be lit with thousands of fluorescent stars, as if the sky had been scattered on the ground. At the beginning, I thought I was delirious, but later, I had to admit that the jungle was enchanted. I put my hand under the mosquito net and picked up the phosphorescent nuggets that were strewn around on the ground. Sometimes, I brought back a stone, or at other times a twig or a leaf, but as soon as I touched them, their supernatural light disappeared, and yet I only had to put them back on the ground for them to regain their power and light up again. That's a magical description of a night in communion with nature, but the same nature that beyond the people you were with held you captive. How did you work out, how were you able to still see such beauty and such enchantment in a world which had you effectively imprisoned? I think that uh, my relationship with the jungle uh, was like everything in captivity. It was never black or white. You see, the jungle for me sometimes was the enemy. It was the prison. It was the the one that was not allowing me to, to to get home because it was so dense. It was impossible to, to just oh well it was possible but very hard to just march and, and get the way through through the vegetation. But sometimes the jungle was for me my protector because I could hide in the jungle when I would escape and then the fog wouldn't see me. Um, it, was, it was also uh, the jungle who gave me the, uh, the highway home, the rivers. Um, so my relationship with the jungle was, was I think, evolving in a way that by the end of my captivity, I could just feel that there was, there was a connection um, with the soul of, um, of the jungle that resonated in my soul and gave me a pace in my thoughts. And I'm going to say something that perhaps you, you will find very silly, but, but it's something that I really, I mean, that was how it, I felt it. Uh, I went to see Avatar five times. <laughs> five times. Because that jungle um, at night with the fluorescent things, that was like I, I witnessed some nights. And it was not every night. It was only the nights where there was no moon. The nights without moon, what you were reading, which is this phosphorescent light on, on the objects that were in, in this jungle. It, it was, it, it happened. And I was thinking, wow, I mean, this is kind of crazy. But, but it really happened. And the noises also. Um, the, the, the jungle is full of, of course, noises of animals and calls of birds and uh, crying monkeys and all those things, owls, all those things. Uh, uh, um, Frogs, all those things you have them in, in, in the jungle. But then some nights you have mineral sounds. You have like bells, tinkling bells. 
And, and it was, I, I couldn't just <laughs> say, the same magic exists. <laughs> Ingrid, uh, on another occasion, you said, drinking my usual hot drink one morning, I saw a red and blue flash overhead in the foliage. I pointed to show the guard the extraordinary, excuse my Spanish, Guacamaya. 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 Thank you. That had just landed a few yards above us. It was a huge parrot, a vision of paradise with carnival colours, and it sat watching us, intrigued from up on the perch, unaware of its extreme beauty. What had I done? The guard sounded the alarm, and Andres hurried over with his hunting rifle. The bird was easy prey. It was no feat to kill this magnificent, naive creature. A second later, its inert body lay on the ground, blue and orange feathers scattered everywhere. I took it out on, on Andres. Why had he done something so pointless and stupid? He answered, spitting his words out like a, a machine gun. I can kill what I want, especially pigs and people like you. What do we do when there is such beauty and such ugliness together on this planet? And which is going to prevail? Oh, the beauty. The beauty uh, prevails, the beauty in us. You, you see, one of the things that I, I am convinced is that Andres, for example, this commander, and all the other commanders that I had to deal with, they were, they were, they could be very nasty. This was a very nasty thing to do. But there was light in them too. I mean, you had to go and find the light. I remember one conversation with this guy. He was um, in a bad mood one day, and he was just, you know, being very horrible uh, with, with, with me and with my, uh, the other prisoner, Tar. Um, and he had had this horrible attitude in just forbidding us to do anything. We couldn't move. I mean, he was in, the, in a bad mood. So I came to him and I said, look, Andres, um, I don't understand why you're reacting like this. I mean, you're the commander of this camp. You can do whatever you want. Why are you so bitter? You, probably you don't want to be here. I don't want to be here either. But that's your choice, not mine. At least you have the choice. Why don't you make the most of what you're living here? I mean, just be, be a nice human being to the others. Being abducted is hard enough. Why just, and I think the guy just at this moment, he paused and he, he it, it was a moment where I understood that words are so powerful. I mean, if we knew the power we have with our words, we can change the world with our words. This is what we believe as green. This is our power. The words. I think right on the darker side, again, you were chained by the neck to a tree. For how long? Uh, for more than four years. Why was that? Because I tried to escape many times, but at the end they decided they um, were not going to take any more chances with me. But the, the chain was, of course, the, the symbol of, of everything. But there were tricky things. For example, Depending on the guards, they would tie the chain even, I mean, tighter to the neck. So sometimes it was really painful. Sometimes I couldn't even swallow because I had the chain so, so tight. For how long? For days, months. They were, they could be vicious. Um, there were, of course, being tight is everything of, of this relationship with, with, with the dominant one that can, you know, put you in that situation. So when I was uh, chained, I had to ask permission for everything. 